think we're going to start with some review from what we looked at in the last lecture video. We're talking about hypothesis testing for one population proportion. And I said that's a specific type of inference where we ask a specific question about a population perimeter. Here our perimeter of interest is one population proportion. So a hypothesis test will create, remember, two competing statements, a statement of equality, which is called the null hypothesis, and then a statement of inequality, which is called the alternative. Now there are five steps for moving through a hypothesis test. The first step is identification. And so I'd like you to be able to see how to do the process. And so we're going to continue with the example of Skittles and the proportion of red Skittles. So in step one, if I were writing out my identification statements, there are two statements that I want to make. One is what the alternative is, or excuse me, one is what the population is. So here my population would be all bags of Skittles. My sample then would just be, and we didn't clarify it, but it would just be some bags of Skittles. And if we were doing an actual example, we would know how many bags we had. Now one thing that I add that isn't included in your textbook is a parameter definition. So here our parameter is P. So P is going to represent what I want to make an inference on. So here it's going to be the proportion of, and then I'd state my population. So proportion of all bags of Skittles. And then I would state my success. And here I'm interested in just red Skittles. So the reason I write this is because it helps me to make my inference at the end of the hypothesis test. Let's see if you can see that all at once. So that's step one, is identifying both the population and sample. And then something that I included is actually defining the parameter. The next step is step two, which would be to write your null and alternative hypothesis. Now, these are the examples that we showed in the last lecture. There are three different types of null and alternative hypotheses. The first is called a two-tailed test. And this would be when you had a null of p equals some null value. So let's continue with the Skittles example and use 0.2. So this value here is what we refer to as the null value, and the notation for it, as you can see on the left side of your screen, is p sub 0. So that's the null value. Then we have a right tail test, which means we're interested in the area on the right side of the curve. So here we would have a null p less than or equal to 0.2, and then our alternative would be p is greater than 0.2. So it's called right-tailed because if you're trying to find the probability of getting the results you did or something more extreme, you would be interested in the right side, so depending on where your test statistic is in that area. And then the next one is a left tail test, and that means you would be interested in the probability of getting what you did or something uh, more extreme on the left hand side. So that would be a null of greater than or equal to 0.2 with an alternative of p less than 0.2. So I've already showed you the null value, so all of these have the same null value of 0.2, and the notation for the null value 
is p sub zero. So generically, the null value would be represented with p sub zero, which is what you can see on the left hand side of your screen. So if I were to talk about these statements in terms of what it would be or what I would be interested in, here this alternative means that my research question or what I'm interested in, it's just showing that my parameter is different from point two. So I'm not sure if it's less than or greater than. Either of those could indicate that it's not point two, which is why it's called two-tailed. So it could either be less than or it could be greater than for it to not be point two. Here, my right-tailed test, or one tail, I essentially, for this research question, am interested in if my proportion of Skittles is greater than 0.2. So do I think that more of the bags, the bags are made up of more red Skittles than 0.2? And then the alternative down here for the left-tailed test, where I would be interested in the area on the left side of the curve, this one I'm saying, I think the proportion of um, all bags of Skittles that are red is less than 0.2. So in terms of what that statement would be in a paragraph, here the two-tailed test I'm saying, I think that the proportion of all bags of Skittles that are red is not equal to 0.2. Here I'm saying, I think the proportion of all bags of Skittles that are red is greater than 0.2. And finally down here, this left-tailed test I'm saying, I think the proportion of Skittles or all bags of Skittles that are red is less than 0.2. So in the next example, we'll move on to step three.